Over the last century plus, the Olympic Games have produced countless legends, champions who racked up medal after medal and whose brilliance on the brightest international stage turned them into cultural icons. Larissa Latinina, Carl Lewis, Usain Bolt. But there's no debate as to who stands atop that proverbial podium. Without question, the most transcendent Olympian ever is Michael Phelps, the unrivaled swimming talent whose name has become synonymous with gold medals. And that legacy can be traced back to two mesmerizing weeks in the summer of 2004. That August, Phelps started carving out his singular place in sports history, turning in a performance at the Athens Games that not only helped distinguish him as the greatest swimmer ever, but as the most dominant force the Olympic Games have ever seen. Heading into the 04 Olympics, few athletes were generating more buzz than Phelps, a Baltimore-born swimming phenom who epitomized the word prodigy. By eight years old, Phelps was already breaking national age group records. He once estimated that he broke about 200 of them. At the age of 15, Phelps appeared in his first Olympic Games, representing the US in Sydney and becoming America's youngest Olympic male swimmer in nearly seven decades. And over the ensuing years, the young standout only reinforced his billing as a potential all-time great. Memorably, just months after the 2000 Olympic Games, Phelps became swimming's youngest world record holder, completing the 200-meter butterfly in just under 1 minute 55 seconds. That same year, by the way, Swimming World tabbed Phelps as the American Male Swimmer of the Year for the first of 11 times. And by the summer of 2003, Phelps would own several more world records, including those for 200-meter individual medley and 400-meter individual medley. Ultimately, as the 04 Olympics drew nearer, there was no doubt as to whether the 19-year-old Phelps would dazzle in Athens. Actually, Phelps graced the cover of Sports Illustrated's Olympics Preview Edition. As you might expect, the cover story went on about his remarkable potential and included a litany of gushing quotes from various swimming legends, including this one from three-time Olympic gold medalist Pablo Morales. Phelps' greatness was so obvious, so inevitable, that he was a household name before he had a single Olympic medal under his belt. Never before, frankly, had a swimmer captured the public's imagination like Phelps, whose celebrity was powerful enough to earn him endorsement deals from Visa, AT&T, and, naturally, Speedo. And as he descended on Athens, Phelps was justifiably being held to a different standard than the rest of his fellow Olympians. The question wasn't, will he win gold? The question was, will he set a new record for gold medals in a single Olympic Games, surpassing fellow American swimmer Mark Spitz's record of seven from 1972? And although Phelps ultimately came up short of that incredibly lofty benchmark, he still stole the show in Athens, delivering one of the most captivating and dominant performances in the history of the Games and laying the foundation of his unparalleled Olympic resume. On the first day of competition in Athens, Phelps participated in his first event, the 400 meter individual medley, which, if you recall, he already held the world record for. And spoiler alert, it was no contest. Phelps not only dusted the competition, but he shattered his own world record, completing the race in just under four minutes, nine seconds to establish a new record time and claim his first Olympic gold medal. And Phelps would get mighty comfortable up there on that podium. The 100 meter butterfly? He took home gold and set a new Olympic record. Ditto for the 200 meter butterfly and the 200 meter individual medley. All told, Phelps took home gold in four of the five individual events he competed in, coming up short in only the 200 meter freestyle, which he lost by less than a second to arguably the greatest freestyle swimmer ever in Australia's Ian Thorpe. For the record, Phelps still won the bronze in that event, which was dubbed the race of the century due to its high profile contestants and established a new record time for American born swimmers in the process. So where are we? Four golds and a bronze, right? Not bad, but Phelps wasn't done. In addition to his individual dominance, Phelps was also a huge boon to Team USA in the three relay events he participated in. Most memorably, Phelps helped the Americans dethrone the favored Thorpe-led Australians in the 4x200 meter freestyle relay, with the Yanks beating out the Aussies by 0.13 seconds. Days later, Phelps contributed to another American gold medal, propelling Team USA into the finals of the 4x100 meter medley relay with a brilliant showing in the preliminary heats. Why didn't he swim in the finals, you ask? 
because Phelps gave up his spot in the championship relay so that his teammate, Ian Crocker, who had struggled in the 100 meter freestyle relay, could have a chance to win a gold, which he and his teammates did, establishing a new world record and adding another gold medal to Phelps' count. And speaking of that 100 meter freestyle relay, although Crocker and the Americans disappointed in that race, an event Team USA had won seven times in eight previous Olympic games, Phelps still helped his country land a bronze in that event, bringing his total medal count to eight. Eight medals, six gold, two bronze. Historic stuff. In fact, with his command performance in Athens, Phelps tied Alexander Detyatin's record for medals in a single Olympic Games, matching the eight that the Russian gymnast had won in Moscow in 1980. Meanwhile, although he came up just shy of Spitz's record, Phelps' six gold still represented one of the most dominant showings in Olympics history. Before Phelps, only two other athletes had won six golds in a single games, and neither of those other two added any bronze or silver medals to their count either. By any reasonable accounting, it was an immensely successful showing for Phelps, who, again, was 19 years old. Spitz, for the record, was 22 when he won his seven golds in 72. In any event, Phelps had validated the hype, and it was clear that he was destined to dominate Olympic men swimming for the foreseeable future. Actually, dominate doesn't adequately describe what Phelps accomplished in the years that followed. In Beijing in 08, Phelps broke Spitz's record, winning eight gold medals in what was, and remains, the greatest showing in Olympic history. He would then go on to win more gold medals than any other competitor at both the 2012 Games in London and the 2016 Games in Rio. By the time he retired from competitive swimming for the second and final time following the 2016 Games, Phelps had racked up 28 medals, 23 of them gold. No other Olympian has even 10 gold medals. Not only is he the greatest Olympian who ever lived, but there isn't even a distant second. And it was nothing if not fitting that it was in Athens, the birthplace of the modern Olympic Games and a couple hundred miles south of Mount Olympus, that a veritable swimming god was born. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.